Moving on then to Sigma W session 2. In this session we will concentrate primarily on coupled stress and pore pressure type of analyses. We may have a pore pressure change due to loading. This in turn results in excess pore pressures which dissipate with time and this is in essence consolidation. In this session we are going to look at a series of Sigma W coupled a type of analyses. These examples that we're going to use in this workshop are all based or taken from the detailed examples that we ship with the software. For those of you who are interested in more documentation on these examples, I refer you to the detailed examples that we ship with the software. Just a few comments then about the fundamentals of the Sigma W coupled formulation. Fundamentally, the entire objective is to compute volume change. We may want to compute the volume change or settlement that results from the dissipation of excess pore pressures, which may have in turn resulted from external loading. We are basically wanting to look at time-dependent settlement. We also may want to look at time-dependent swelling, for example, that may arise due to the infiltration of precipitation. Many of the examples that we're going to look at is where we apply a load, like placement of an embankment. The loading induces excess pore pressures, and the subsequent consolidate and the soil then subsequently consolidates due to the dissipation of the excess pore pressures. We are also going to look at a few examples where we have volume change due to the infiltration of precipitation. The infiltration results in a change in pore water pressure and the change in pore water pressure results in a change in effective stress. And the change in effective stress in turn results in a volume change. Here are the two fundamental equations in the Sigma W coupled formulation. To those of you who were part of the Sigma W session 1. You already saw this equation. We write it here just a slightly different, although in essence it is the same, where the matrix here, the K matrix, includes the material properties and the volume or areas of the elements. Then we have a vector here of nodal displacements equal to a vector of nodal forces. This is known as the equilibrium equation as we mentioned in session one. It is in essence somewhat analogous to a limit equilibrium analysis which is all based about limit equilibrium. But when we get a converged solution in sigma w solving this equations, we are in essence analyzing a case that is stable or it is in a state of equilibrium. To those of you that were part of the CW sessions, you will recall we had a very uh, a similar equation in CW. We had uh, once again the same matrix that constituted the material properties and the volume and the storage a vector, in this case we write the vector of pore pressures. In CW we had a vector of total head. Here we have written it in terms of changes in pore pressure equal to some change in flow at the boundary or at the boundary of the problem for example. So the objective here is to 
solve these two equations at the same time. That is, we want to solve for displacement and changes in pore pressure at the same time. In matrix notation, here are the two equations. The e equation of equilibrium and the equation of continuity and we want to solve them both at the same time. And in order to solve them both at the same time, we need a coupling matrix, which we call L. We won't go into the details here in the formulation of the coupling matrix, but it is worthwhile noting that in this particular case here, that in essence, this is the sigma equation and this is the seep equation. Now, if we were to specify an external load, we would compute both displacement and pore pressure. If we were to specify some flow on the boundary, we would also compute some displacement and some change in pore pressure. Now, if we were to specify some displacement, we would then also compute some change in pore pressure. So by coupling these two equations, we are solving for two primary unknowns, and these two primary unknowns are the displacement and the change in pore pressure. Now, a variation of these two equations, it is possible to compute delta U with seep W first, and as a result, the change in pore pressure becomes known. It becomes in essence, a boundary condition. And if it becomes a boundary condition, then for a pre-computed change in U, we can then compute each a deformation or a volume change. We call this an uncoupled volume change type of an analysis, and this is a special type of analysis in the sigma w formulation. We are going to do one example where we specif compute the change in u with seep w first and then look at the associated volume change. Sigma W is formulated to handle unsaturated volume change as well as saturated volume change. Although it is primarily aimed at consolidation, which is in essence saturated volume change, it is possible to also uh, look at a case where the domain may have a saturated zone and an unsaturated zone. At the heart of the formulation for this saturated, unsaturated formulation in sigma w, once again we have the volumetric water content function. We spend a lot of time on the volumetric water content function in seep w. It is at the heart of a transient seep w type of an analysis. We use the exact same information in a coupled analysis because we are solving in, es solving in essence the exact seep same seep w equation. Now do recall from our session number two on seep w for those of you who were part of it is that we talked about the slope of the volumetric water content function where the pore pressure is positive. We're talking about this slope here. And that this slope is related to m sub v, which is the coefficient of volume compressibility.
Sigma W is formulated in such a way that we must maintain a relationship between M sub V and Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, which in turn is related to the bulk modulus. Now, an easy way to remember this is that if Poisson's ratio is a third, then M sub V is equal to three times three thirds minus two thirds divided by E is equal to uh, three times one third divided by E is equal to one over E. And in many, many cases, we set Poisson's ratio to a third for a coupled saturated analysis, and then M sub V is the reciprocal of one over Young's modulus or vice versa. A useful little relationship to keep in mind when defining the relationship between M sub V and the soil stiffness. A few further comments on maintaining this relationship. When we do a CW analysis all alone, then M sub V must be user specified. You as the user needs to specify M sub V as part of the volumetric water content function. However, in a sigma W fully coupled analysis, M sub V is computed from the user specified stiffness of the soil Young's modulus. It is essential to maintain this relationship and should and to make sure that the relationship is maintained properly in a coupled analysis. The M sub V is computed in sigma W from the specified Young's modulus, as I have said. If you should happen to specify an M sub V with the volumetric water content function in a coupled analysis, then sigma W will override it from the computed relationship. And this is important because we must maintain that, volume, that relationship between M sub V and Young's modulus. It is also extremely important in the coupled analysis that our volumetric water content be smooth and continuous as we move from the negative to the positive pore pressure range. And uh, I will make further comment about comments about this in the next example and illustrate what I mean by a continuous smooth relationship between the specified M sub V and the general volumetric water content function. So these are just a few comments on the fundamentals of the coupled formulation in sigma W. The important thing to remember is that we are solving two equations and we are solving them simultaneously and consequently as you will see we need to specify both sigma type material properties and seep type material properties and also also we must specify now two types of boundary conditions we must specify the sigma w type of boundary condition and also the seep w hydraulic type boundary conditions. So since we are solving the two equations at the same time, we have more boundary conditions and more material properties to specify at the same time.